I got a few preliminary things to go through, so I think we can go ahead and, and kick things off. So I'll call to order um, the October 23rd meeting of the Montpelier Planning Commission. Um, we first have to approve the agenda. So planning commissioners, um, I need a motion from one of you to approve the agenda for tonight. And this is the agenda. I, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll verbalize a lot more things than normal for Carl's benefit um, tonight. Um, you know, Mike always sends out the agenda over email uh, prior to the meeting. And so that's the agenda that we follow for the meeting. And the rules, we have to follow certain rules of procedure um, to conduct the meeting. And one thing we have to do every time is to approve the agenda. And we're supposed to stick to that agenda because the pub that way the public knows and has notice of what we're up to. Um, that's why we, why we do that. So do we have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Okay, motion from Brian. Do we have a second? I'll yes. Second. I don't know if I'm allowed to yet. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> we'll uh we'll give it to we'll give it to Carl this time. So he's yeah. there. It's he's he's on the books as as doing an act on the planning commission now. So um a motion from Brian and a second from Carlton uh to approve the agenda. Those in favor of approving the agenda, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Procedural hurdle passed. The next thing on the agenda is uh comments from the chair. I do have some quick things to go over. Um one's an update about um so Carlton, we we recently reached out to the housing committee, which is you know one of the other. There's there's many committees um, in Montpelier that are like ours in that they're you know composed of residents who um, do work you know and and bring recommendations to the city council, and some of those committees bring recommendations to us because a lot of the planning stuff gets fed by Mike had mentioned the energy committee earlier. There's the housing committee. There's some committees that, that, um, give us things to, to forward on to work on housing committees. One of them, it's a very important one. So we wanted to get to know those uh, people better. So we reached out to them to ask if they wanted to do an informal get together just to get to know each other sometime soon. Um, they're interested. So, uh, the update is that they're interested and I'll be getting back soon about, a possible day and venue for that. Um, I also want to check with people because I'm not sure that I will be making the November 27 uh, planning commission meeting. And it's a few days after Thanksgiving. If anybody has Thanksgiving plans that are going to bleed over into Monday, I just want to check to see, because if we have a few of those, then maybe we should cancel. Um, but everyone who's here, do you know, if you'll be available on November 27th. I'll be here, Kirby. I'll be here. Yeah, I think I'll be here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it. Um, I'll leave it alone. Um, but I will be getting back from Venice on that day. So I don't think that I'll be making the meeting. So, you know. Um, Are you serious? Don't, don't get too yeah, You got to get your priorities straight, Kirby. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Can yeah, I no, also be coming back from Venice that day? <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, I'll so, be coming back from Royalton, Vermont. <laughs> that's yeah, that's a nice place too, though. Yeah, that's exotic. Right? Yeah, you can hang out on some water, just like Venice. <laughs> you can have, have a worthy burger. Just visualize a, a gondola with heat and, and on a paddleboard. You, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so so I'll, I'm going to leave that November meeting alone. Then, um, just just heads up. I mean, I I might be able to make it, but uh, um, and then uh, the last thing is wanted to uh, get feedback and maybe an update from Mike about setting the hearing for. Um, so Carlton, recently we uh, have been working on some um, like some uh, adjustments to the zoning regulations. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion about that recently and we had an informal discussion with the public at one point but um, according to state law we have to 
for for uh, to to make changes like these, we have to set up a, a hearing where the public can come and give us feedback formally. Uh, and uh, the whole process is, you know, we discuss it, we come up with some ideas, we put those out there for the public to see. People um, are given have to be given two weeks notice. Um, I believe it's two weeks uh, of our hearing, and then they come and give us their feedback. And uh, we don't have to do anything with that feedback, but we have to at least give them the opportunity. And then from there, we'll vote on whatever zoning changes that we'll do, and we'll send those on to the city council. And so we don't have any power to like to make laws ourselves or to make regulations ourselves, but we um, make our recommendations to the city council. And uh, most of the time, those things, th most of the items are not very contentious and they do get passed, but occasionally city council will reject or change something that we send along, like like one item. But for these zoning changes, I mean, there's a lot of technical housekeeping type changes that, that's mostly been in Mike's territory, but I don't remember, but we've probably got like 30 altogether, something like that. Um, so anyways, that's coming up. So Mike, uh, uh, what's what day do you think is going to make sense for that? I had a meeting with uh, Brian from CVRPC, our Regional Planning Commission, um, because they're the ones who are putting together the draft zoning map. And so he has gotten buried in a bunch of other projects. And so we had a conversation about our timing. So we also have a 30-day notice that I have to send to the state before the Planning Commission public hearing. So, But that can be done by email, so that's not as much of a problem putting things in the newspaper which is a requirement for the hearing there's a 15 day but we always have to leave a week because you have to send it to the newspaper and it has to get published 15 days in advance so um can i ask you a question yep it, it, because of the internet that doesn't uh truncate in any way nope not yet we have we have pushed for that um they have made things a little bit more flexible in a couple of places, including being able to have Zoom meetings. Um, and so that's that's one of the pluses, but they have not adjusted any of those. Uh, they made a few minor adjustments. I used to have to send them to the state via certified mail and hard copy. And so they finally three or four years ago, finally let us just go and email it to them because they're all digital copies anyway. So we're all just trying to figure out why, why do you need a hard copy when we can just email it to you? And they preferred the email anyways, because they have a big digital library. So finally, a few years ago, they did make that change that I can just email it to them. So that's relatively quick. So if I'm going to be on, if we are going to have this on the public hearing for the December 11th, meeting that's our second monday in december then i would have to have it sent by november 11th which is saturday so november 10th um to those there are five groups that i have to send them to doesn't matter what they all are that's a budding neighbor a budding communities regional planning commission state um somebody else so we'll send all those out um by november 10th so we're on the 23rd now he said he needed about two weeks to finish up the zoning map. So that puts it November 6th, which is the Monday before that week. So that's pretty much what we've decided on is the fastest we can get this in is December 11th. And uh, we'll shoot for that date. Um, I'll probably ask, we may have to be a little bit longer on that day, perhaps, because it would be good for us if, especially if we're only having one meeting in December, which I'm, I know we're only having one meeting in December because um, the next meeting would be Christmas. And so we're clearly not meeting on Christmas. Um, so if we're only having one meeting, we really want to get the zoning draft to city council for January. And the reason for that is we want to get it adopted by city council before town meeting day, which is the first Tuesday in March. So 
we don't want to have public hearings before town meeting day and then have them try to adopt it after town meeting day because we might have new counselors and then we've got to redo it all. So we usually try to set as a, you know, if it takes longer, it takes longer. But if we set a goal of saying we want them to have it adopted in February before town meeting day, that's why. Um, so I would really like if we have a public hearing December 10th and we know we're not going to have another meeting in December that we stay a little bit later if we need to, to approve whatever changes we're going to make and then forward it to city council. Um, and that sometimes if we get 20 or 30 people who want to provide comment, it can take a while to have a public hearing. Um, and I, I, uh, I know Kirby has been, done a very good job of really running meetings. So we run 5.30, 7.30 and that's it. We don't go later, but this may be one time I ask that we might need a little bit of an exception, a little bit of flexibility so we can try to get that approved. So we all can enjoy Christmas having this put behind us. Um, so that's my timing uh, for the hearing. I, I, I agree with, I agree with that, Mike, actually, because um, I, I think we should vote. We shouldn't, we shouldn't wait a month to vote after the hearing because I think people will not retain as much. Um, so voting either of the night of or just waiting and doing the hearing in January seem like the most practical ways. And from what you're saying about town town meeting day, I do think that the ideal is to just get it done early December. Um, so let's plan for that and let's hope that we can get through the comments before 730 so that we can have some time to vote and discuss. Um, but yeah, I think people should pre be prepared to do that. Um, okay. Those are the those are the things I had to bring up, just the, the little housekeeping thing. So um, I don't have anything else. Did anybody else have any announcements or anything before we move on on the agenda? I just have a question for Mike. Um, uh, a week ago, someone mentioned to me in flood recovery about the whole like, why don't we just build the whole city up? And I was like, well, actually, the planning department is seeking to elevate certain buildings in Montpelier and they're looking for state funding to do so. Um, and I was, I was just wondering, Mike, if that had gone anywhere since the last time you mentioned it. Yeah, we don't have any money yet. Um, you know, it's, it, it's always been and continues to be my recommendation. I know there's a lot of people who have different views, but I, I think the the biggest thing is to, if a building can be elevated, literally lift up, fill in the basement and you, you um, leave the building three feet, two to three feet above the base flood elevation. That's the best solution to the problem um, because it really addresses any way that the flooding happens. So um, because sometimes people are like, well, we should make more wetlands in the up. I have nothing against making more wetlands, but that doesn't stop an ice jam from flooding um, downtown Montpelier. But if everybody's buildings are elevated, no matter why, um, you know, uh, if there's for some reason, some, some flood happens for any reason, uh, the buildings are elevated, um, you know, it, it doesn't guarantee nobody will get flooded because certainly you can have a thousand year flood event that exceeds it, but that's why we want to be a couple of feet above. And that's been my suggestion, but we've asked the state to redirect existing money. So everything operates in a fiscal year. We're talking about the 20 fiscal year 24 state money we asked them to reallocate some of that money to help to let us use that money to apply it to help in in our case residential properties elevate their homes um that didn't get enough support so they have said they're going to take it up in the legislature in january to allocate new money towards that idea um so we just have to wait to see if it actually gets approved or not but it sounds like a lot of people, because it's not just Montpelier, uh, we happen to be the ones who are really pushing the idea, but they want to put together a, a set of funds that people in Barrie, Hardwick, Woodbury, Callis, you know, a lot of communities have been hurt and a lot of people could benefit by having access to the funds to, ele to elevate their homes. Um, so we have, so don't like, have it yet, but it would help. And do you think it's like budget adjustment? Act it would be in there. 
or you think well we tried good? to yeah we tried to do a budget adjustment um and some people have said they're willing to they weren't willing to do it with the and this is stuff that i'm not usually um dealing with so i don't probably have all the words right there's a, some budget committees that have the right to reallocate existing funds, and they said no. But I guess that you can pass a the budget reallocation bill, which the entire legislature could vote on. So just because five people said no doesn't mean that if 150 people had a chance to vote on it, they wouldn't vote yes. So uh, we there is another uh, kind of opportunity to get in there and get some of this year's funding reallocated. Um, and we'll see who who can push and, and get some some things to change. There were a lot of a lot of impacted communities, not just in central Vermont, but um uh Ludlow and a number of southern Vermont towns also got hurt. So there are there are a lot of places that could benefit. And so the more communities that could benefit by having some some money available to help homeowners elevate homes. Um, the more likely we are to get the bill to pass. So are the uh, Montpelier based legislators uh, pushing for this? Are they, are they heavily involved or is it mostly just the city? Our, our legislators are, are involved. Um, in, in fact, Ann Cummings is one of the key people who's on one of the Senate appropriation. Maybe Senate finance, Senate She's finance. The chair. He's a chair yeah. of Senate finance. Yeah. So we have a few people who are in key positions that help us. Um, and we're going to, we've, the city has hired and uh, over the past couple of years has hired a lobbyist to help advance, um, bills that are critical to, you know, not only to the city, but to most larger municipalities. So. Hey, Mike, it, it, yeah. this is, I'm, I'm going to just take newbie, um, just kind of roll here, but is there any like talk anywhere where there could be developed like make a maybe a mega bucks lottery ticket that was specifically geared towards like you know the impacted places so that it, we could kind of push those for people who you know, could possibly fund something extra without impacting you know or you know, quicker quicker ways of money. Yeah, I think they've been doing some fundraising. I think the state sale of the we are Vermont strong is going into a fund to help flood victims. I think, I think that's one of them. Um, so they do have some ideas at the state. I know there's a lot of fundraising Montpelier Live is doing Montpelier specific fundraising, but most of that has been targeted to the businesses um, who were probably the heaviest, most damaged. Um, but yeah, we we'll, I think we're open to, you know, city and state are open to any any ideas for being able to raise money to make a difference um we're we're looking for about two million dollars for montpelier that would only elevate some of the residential properties that doesn't get to the downtown commercial buildings but it does help uh, a, a number of single family homeowners who are currently homeless because their houses were you know they had two to three feet of water into their first floors and so they really need a lot of help to get back on their feet. Um, they've got insurance money to fix their house, but the insurance money does not elevate their house. So they're all like, why would we put everything back to wait to get flooded again? We're willing to fix up our houses, but we need help elevating the house. So we need you know, um, some money to help elevate the house and then we'll fix the house. So that's that's where we're trying to help out on those. And then we'll look for different money to help where there's a source of federal money is called BRIC. I don't know what the acronym stands for, but that's basically does scoping studies to, to look at various properties. And we're going to look to get some grant money to help get some uh, studies of the downtown buildings. Cause these big brick buildings, we're not talking about like pick up and elevate where Obishans is. That's, that's right. just not a project that's going to happen, but you can flood proof those buildings with floodgates. Um, and but we've got to go through and, and have a professional go through and look at those buildings and provide a recommendation that says, you know, you need this type of floodgate here. You need this type of backflow preventer. You need this type of X, Y and Z um, flood proofing in order to keep this building safe in the event of a flood. 
Um, and so then, then once we've got a plan for each building in the downtown, then we can go through and get money that says, okay, this is going to cost $300,000 to make this flood proof, this building, um, similar to, um, M and T bank. If you ever go down the old Chittenden bank, yeah. if you ever look at that, there's, you see these, just these stainless steel slots. Well, that's where you go out, you drop a panel in, latch them in and it flood proofs the building. Like the and they found, office. yep. Yeah, the post office, unfortunately, they built theirs um, post 9-11, and it was really designed to be, uh, I think it was designed oh, yeah. to be a blast barrier and keep people from being able to drive trucks into it. Yeah. They actually didn't make it high enough. It was, wasn't was flood, wasn't to the height of the flood. Yeah. <laughs> they never yeah. asked us for, for, our, for what we would do because we would have told them to do it higher because um, they weren't high as, as high as base flood elevation, which is why the post office flooded. But it was a fl it was a flood barrier, but it wasn't to the correct height, and that was what went wrong with that one. But so during 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 the um, the second meeting for the uh, resilient for Montpelier, uh, we had breakout sessions, and some people from Waterbury there. Are there any talks about like say Randall Street, how they did it, or any types of uh, the individuals who for the uh, 2011 with Irene, or, or uh, so that there's not uh, you know reinventing the wheel that it could possibly already be there or is, are those things too obsolete at this point? Well, our planning staff has met very shortly after the, the flood with um, Steve Lott speech. Who's the, who was, he just retired this year, the planner for Waterbury and Barb Farr, who was the resilience officer for Waterbury post flood. So she helped them go through their reconstruction um, and we got a lot of advice and recommendations from them on, you know, where to get money, where not to get money. What are the projects that work well? What are the ones that didn't work well? And that's why, that's why we're working to get state money and not federal money to try to elevate houses because they, they, they spent three years trying to get federal money to elevate their buildings mm -hmm. only to find out that they really couldn't. And so that was great advice for us because we know, you can't use federal money to elevate houses, um, at least not historic ones, um, because the historic requirements uh, are so high that it, you have to meet a cost benefit analysis and the, the historic requirements make it such that you can't meet the cost, be cost benefit and then you demolish the building. So yeah. FEMA is really good at doing buyout. Um, not very good at elevating buildings. So if you want to do a buyout, we'll steer people towards uh, FEMA. And if they want to elevate their house, then we got to steer them towards some other funds that don't exist. And that's why we want to go to the state and say, make these exist because um, we're in a housing crisis and we can't go around demolishing, you know, 35 units of housing um, when we could save them by spending a little bit of money to save them. So... Okay, guys, I got to jump in and uh, move uh, move us along the agenda. We have yep. uh, the consultants are waiting to talk to us. Um, the next thing, though, is to introduce Carlton. <laughs> so, um, Carlton, if if there's anything you'd like to say about yourself, uh, now's the time. You have the floor for that. I'm very happy to be here. Um, I've lived in Washington County for 20 years. Uh, worked in various industries. Um, am in Montpelier specifically because it's my retirement town. Uh, I'll be 50 next year and I had done 700,000 miles trucking. Uh, I got into trucking after software to get rid of coworkers. Uh, and now I'm back to, uh, indulge in community and, um, and, uh, make a difference. Thank you. That's it. All right. That's great. And maybe we'll go through some of our introductions later on if we've got some time. Yeah, yeah. Um, you get you get to know all of us. Um, Got to watch out for Brian. He's really mean. But uh, otherwise, everybody's all right. Dude, well, um, I'm like sitting right here. <laughs> I was the first one to say hi to Carlton. I was the first one to say hi and introduce myself. Come on. I mostly chose you because you're probably the nicest person. <laughs> maybe maybe in all of my career. So. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. Keep it going. <laughs> and uh, and with that, uh, let's segue into voting for the next chair and vice chair. <laughs> Consider that. 
attacking Brian as my campaign. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, so we have, a, we have, um, we had two reappointments, Aaron and Ariane, even though they're not here right now are still with us, uh, on the planning commission. Um, and, and Carlton, uh, took, um, a vacant seat, which was left by John Adams. Um, so with that changeover, uh, we'll do, uh, new elections for chair and vice chair. Um, who are, who is currently I, Kirby and Gabe for Carlton's benefit. Gabe is right. Gabe Lajeunesse is our vice chair. And and Gabe and Gabe is with us now. He's he's arrived. Uh so I don't know. I'm just gonna open the floor for um anybody to have questions or to make nominations. Um Oh, I think we're in really good hands with the current administration. I was going to move uh, Kirby to remain as chair if you're willing to to keep it. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. It's fine with me. And I think that <laughs> I don't know if I can double nominate, but I mean, I I also and I'm I'm willing to, but also with Gabe, Gabe's work and um, experience in the industry is very valuable, and you know he's a a handsome man and he gets his work done. So I, I think he should be the vice chair as well. All right, and Brian. My... <laughs> I don't need some money there. Nice one. <laughs> well, you guys are doing a good job. You're we're in good hands. So I don't know if you guys are <laughs> amenable to, to staying on as chair and vice chair. Um, yeah, I, I am, I am, I've been, um, this is for me for Carlton's benefit. I mean, I've, I've been on the planning commission a long time now, um, uh, seven, eight years, something in that neighborhood. So I, I probably will move along sometime soon because I want, you know, I think fresh blood in these things is important. Um, but we do, we are in the middle of some zoning changes and the city plan. And so stick in, sticking through that. But I just so everyone knows, and I think I've probably mentioned this before, but I'll be transitioning at some time in the near future. Um, but but I'm I'm good with staying on for now. And Gabe, are you okay? Yeah, I, with I'm okay. I think you know. So Kirby and I, I kind of checked in with Kirby because um, I I will tell you that I do not want to be the chair whenever Kirby decides that he's done. I I have a lot of things going on. And so if there is anybody else that's interested, because with the vice chair, as far as I can tell, does, you know, we, I sort of see the agendas in advance. Um, and then if Kirby were unavailable, you know, then I would um, make sure the meeting was was run. But um, if there's somebody else that's interested in, you know, in that role, I'm, I'm okay with stepping aside too, because I, whenever Kirby does decide that, you know, he's, I mean, he's been here, Kirby, how long have you been the chair? I've been the chair for three or four years, I think. I mean, he's he's had a good tenure. He's going to stick through a bunch of these changes. But if there's anybody else interested, I I'm also okay with stepping aside, so that there could be a little bit of overlap. So I I just would throw that out there. It's good to it's good to think about. It's good for people to think about. Um, we'll have a leadership void sometime in the future, and. The shoes will probably be too much to fill, but someone's got to try, you know. Um, so anyway, okay. So it sounds like we have a nomination from Brian for Gabe and myself. We've accept we've accepted that. Um, so status quo is the is the uh, motion. Um, Mike, do we need a second for? Usually, you need nomination? a second for a nomination. Yeah. Okay, and we may as well play safe anyway. So. Is it, does Brian have a second to his motion to, to nominate okay. Gabe and I? Second from Maria. Mike, do you want to do the, um, actually the facilitating of it since oh, it's a little, I mean, it doesn't little matter. weird yeah. for me to... No, hmm? no it's, it's fine for you to do it, but you know, it, okay. it really just comes down to if everyone's in favor of the motion, say aye. 
Um, so, so before we do that, though, I'll say, is, is there any, anyone that want to have any discussion about the motion about, um, so the, the motion is to nominate Kirby for vice chair and Gabe for, or Kirby for chair and Gabe for vice chair. Let the record show Kirby for chair, Gabe for vice chair. <laughs> and that's how Gabe accidentally became the chair. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so, so we have, there's, you know, procedurally, discussion time so I, just, I don't want to breeze through it without giving anybody a chance does anybody have anything to discuss with that okay it's okay. doing a great job thank you um okay so those in favor of the motion say aye 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 any opposed any abstain okay so Five oh votes for the continued leadership. Um, okay. And with that, I have a number of decrees. Just kidding. Uh, okay. We've we've so no, we've gotten to like the, the main event for the evening, and that is SE Group is who we have not heard from for a while, have been working hard on uh putting some storyboard pages together. So Carlton, we've worked for a very long time putting together a city, a new city plan that um, we've, you know, we've looked at the chapters individually. We've worked through most of the chapters that go into the city plan. I'm guessing Mike may have told you a little bit about what the city plan is about. Um, I, you know, we, we plan to talk offline tomorrow, which would probably be the best time to go into the the true weeds of it all. But just just to say that we've we've done most of the chapters. There's still there's still a little more work we need to do. But we've passed off the work that we have finished and voted on to our consultant SE group, who are putting the plan into a website format for us. That's the main thing that that they're doing. Um, and so they've checked in with us. And there's there's Aiden, who's a representative of SE, who's going to walk us through the latest work that they've that they've done. So again, this is, they've taken what we've given them and what we voted on already, and they're putting it into a website form, Matt. Take it away, Aiden. Thanks, Kirby, and hi, Carlton. Great to meet you, and welcome to the Planning Commission. Um, Mike, can you give me the capability to, sh well, I, yeah, I do I need the capability can. to share screen. Yep. It says disabled. Huh. All right. But anyway, while you're figuring that out, um, Carlton, for your benefit, and then I'll kind of get into more general update. Um, but I think Kirby and Mike have given it a pretty good introduction um, where we are trying to make a city plan that isn't the sort of like typical, maybe drier PDF that's 60 pages long and that nobody really ever reads, except for when you have some sort of permitting or zoning issue that you really need to get into the details on. Um, so we're trying to make a city plan that is through an interactive website called Story Maps, where each chapter will have its own little page associated with it. So people will be able to, um, for example, for the economic development or historic resources chapter, you'll be able to go through some of the previous context, understand why that specific resource is important. Um, look at some interactive maps that show you maybe where the location of historic resources are. Um, and then it'll launch into what the aspirations, goals, and strategies are for that specific resource. Um, we have started this a while ago at this point, but obviously with some of the existing conditions in Montpelier and just other process items, it's been a bit delayed. Um, Mike and I were chatting the other day and we do have sort of an end of next year deadline for sure to make sure that this gets through planning commission review, public review and council review, um, knowing that each of those will have their own sort of time associated with so I think by the end of this year, it would be wonderful to get a first draft of all the chapters into story maps. 
um, to then go into future public review. We have, let's see, community resources, land use, and maybe one other that have yet to be finalized um, for for our process. Um, Mike and Kirby and everyone else is that there might be one other that isn't quite there yet. Yeah, I had economic development and energy that are mostly done. I think we just needed to get the finals to you. So that that was the one in my note today that I had to go and follow up on. Okie doke. So let's see, this little window always. There we go. Okay. So the planned website Google folder is where you'll find all of the chapters as well as the working drafts and final drafts. Um, there are implementation strategies that, well, that's skipping ahead. I'll get there. Um, but touching base on that John Adams thing, Mike, I'll bring up our strategy there. So, okay, this is the existing story map chapters as they stand. Um, these are all the ones that are created. I think they're, yeah, as we said, two or three more will be added to this. It would be great if there was 12 just for numbers, but there might be 11. <laughs> so is what it is. Historic resources is one of the first ones that we got finalized in a more polished way. Um, some of these other ones have either just small bits and pieces that are waiting to be done, like some mapping data that we still need to get or still needs to be put into the system. I'll just launch into historic resources really quick. So they all start with this structure, introduction, planning context, Synergies is how it relates to other planned chapters, um, implementation summary, and then who are the parts and players involved with moving these strategies forward. Production with some photos, launch into planning context, where these interactive maps will come up showing these specific layers, which relates to the text that you see here. So as people scroll through, different information will come up. So that's the planning context here. And then for each of the maps, we'll have an area where a member of the public will if they are interested, they can zoom around by themselves through these buttons here. So each of the chapters will have this graphic here that shows the relationships with other chapters. Eventually, we can add links in here. There's also a little fun fact for each chapter. Then we get into the implementation summary, where it's right now just aspirations and goals. And the strategies, because there are so many of them, they will go into a separate document that we'll talk about in a second. That is the general template for each of the pages. There's some slight differences in photos and maps for each, but they all should look fairly similar. Um, for those who are interested in the full strategies for each of these chapters, um, John Adams had a vision to put together this interactive matrix item where you could go maybe by chapter or um, by goal, and I don't exactly know what his vision was here, but just have an easy way to search and find exactly what you want rather than just a, a list of, you know, hundreds of strategies. So we do have someone who um, can speak with John and try to get his vision um, created. And if that's just a fancy 
interactive Excel or something like that. Anyway, we can kind of figure out the back end of what we need to create that. But that is something that uh, we will need to still develop, um, as well as there are statutory requirements for having a more static version of that document. So at the very least, um, we can at least link to a PDF before we get that created if it is taking a bit. I think I think it would be good to try to, can, to try to get that done. It seemed like people were really excited by the idea of it. Um, and we, you know, I think you probably heard Aiden that that John just stepped down from planning commission, but we still have access to him. We know where he lives. We can get him. <laughs> um, and yeah, because I I had I had my idea of what he was talking about when he would was talk about that, but I probably not exactly what he meant. Right. Um, right. Yeah. So we'll so, set up a meeting. Yeah. Some of the stuff he was talking about, I do know, like, we do have some um, strategies, right, Mike, with that are the same strategy, but in different chapters. Yeah. Stuff, so I, so I, I know what he was talking about was like linking those things to, sh to show something that would display how, um, if you're interested in uh, bicycle lanes and uh, that might not be one that's in multiple chapters, but it might be just transportation. De but yeah, designated just, yeah. the designated downtown program. That would be one that, you know, it being having a designated downtown gives you access to historic resources uh, grants. So it's in the historic resources as we should continue to um, have our designated downtown because it provides uh, funding opportunities for historic preservation, but it's also an economic development tool as well. So it appears in the economic development chapter. And so, yeah, there's ideas like that that appear in a number of chapters. He also, by because it was going to be coming out of an Excel table, we would have the ability to to label a number of things like we've talked about um, things like programs, um, every, every goal or every strategy was going to be either continue amend or it's new. So if we just wanted to go through and say, what are the new things that we're recommending doing? Because sometimes that's important. There's a lot of things that we do that, you know, we just want to note that there are things that are being done and there's a reason we have a designated downtown. And if people want to know why it's because it helps us implement these different goals, but there's nothing new that we're doing. We're just going to continue doing what we've already done. And then in other cases, if you want to have somebody asks, well, what new things are you going to do? Well, then you could query this table to go through and say, okay, what are all the new things we're doing with historic resources or that we're recommending? And you could go and take a look at that list. Um, so I think that was what he had is because, because it was coming out of an Excel table, we'd be able to have all these different cells where we could query different things, which is really for the policy wonks and Montpelier has its share of policy wonks. If you really want to drill into that and really ask a lot of questions, you can do that. Um, but if you just want to kind of get a, get, get an overview of all of the things, then, then we'd have these static PDFs that you could pull up and go through and, and be able to see where they all plug in. So do we, do we have um, any format so far for the like goals and strategies? Uh, no, we were setting okay. up to, I was setting up to meet with our, um, so our new communications coordinator came on uh, first. She'd been working part-time up until July 1st, and then she became full-time. And so we had been talking throughout the spring about the fact that we were going to be working together when she got full time. So we could start to go and develop these tables because we had to kind of figure out how we're going to give a lot of information without confusing people and without all the, you know, how do we make this? And so she was excited. This was going to be a great project. July 1st, we're going to get rocking and rolling. July 10th, we get flooded. So um, we haven't sat back down to go through and decide, but, now, now we're starting to reach a, a kind of a pressure point where it's like, if we're going to put, if we're going to go to the public and start having public input, 
you know, uh, if we can wrap everything up by December and we can start rolling out some public hearings um, on the city plan starting in January, February, March, then then we're going to need to have this done. So I'm going to have to start meeting with her again. And this is a good reminder because I actually hadn't I hadn't sat down with her on this topic and I should. Mike, is that mostly for the static version? That was for the static version. She was going to help with the formatting of the static. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, let me know if you want support. We can try to create like a template or something like that. But sounds like you're you're going to handle that with her. Yeah, I mean, if you guys have ideas, I'm more than willing to go and again, you know, I know we're working from, you know, our, our different budgets that we have and making budget recommendations going forward. We can certainly work those into the budgets as well. If you wanted to take the first stab at it and we could work with her, because um, I know she's busy as well. I've got to check with her on her timing um, because, yeah, there's there's a lot of communications work going on right now. That makes sense. Yeah, I'm happy to at least sit down on that first call with her and then we can maybe make a game plan after that. Or I guess if you're meeting in person, that makes it a little more difficult. Yeah, but. yeah, maybe we'll set up a Zoom meeting with the the three the three of us or whoever else on your end wants to sit in and we can kick around ideas of how to make this which is the easiest way to get this all put together. Okay. I think the last thing to just kind of introduce for Carlton's benefit and to give an update to everyone else is this home page, which I don't think it has changed almost at all for many months, knowing that we wanted to kind of wait until some things were drafted and come up with some of those, um, those narratives that we really wanted to show up on this page. So we still have um, this as the idea for the home, the hub site here. Um, people will have links to the chapters here, potentially, um, or we will just have them go to this plan chapters tab, um, which currently just has three of them linked, but we can update that really easily. So that's a decision that this group can help with. Um, the eventual interactive matrix that we come up with will be linked here. And then additional resources that are mentioned in each of the chapters. So previous energy plans or renewable energy dashboards or something like that will be linked here as well. Um, yeah, by sorted by chapter. So this is still something that will need to be built out a bit, but I think it makes sense once things are developed to kind of revisit this. Did you, yeah, I think the additional resources would have a couple other pieces on, on the process we used and the, you know, I mean, we have a tab about this plan, but we really would have another one in there that would kind of get into some of the, the background of if people were interested in some of those background facts of, yeah. Right. The, you know, the then, statutes and the requirement, the required pieces and why I have a plan. And, but I would put together just a bunch of little pieces that would kind of go into there. Yeah, Kirby. Oh, um, you, you had mentioned a minute ago, uh, getting some input from us on, I think it was the plan chapters tab. Yeah. Is that um, and just if you wanted to elaborate more for the planning commissioners to, to think about um, what what input did you have in mind, Aiden? Yeah, yeah. So this first page here, we had sort of an initial vision of having the plan chapters available right on the home screen so that there wasn't a lot of confusion. You just sort of immediately saw them. Um, I Because I haven't been in this program for a while, I don't know if there is a way to merge those sort of like embedded photos that we were seeing on the plan chapters page into this page, but I, I think there is. So we can choose between if we want this more icon focused look on the homepage, um, or if we 
want this second page that has just whatever photo is being used on the cover of each story map right now. Um, so I think it's both icons as a choice and then location as a choice. Um, okay. So, okay. Whether to use like the photos or the icons, and then you're asking whether it should be on the main page or have its own tab or, mm -hmm. and I'll say right off the bat, I, I think I like having it at both so that people okay. can stumble on, on it their way. You know what I mean? Um, but what do other people think about the options here? So uh, the icons currently appear in the about the plan section. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's just like the home page. Yep. So you scroll down, scroll down, and then you see a bunch of icons. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the plan chapters is where the photos are. Yep. Hmm. I'd like the photos better than the icons. The icons seem a little impersonal and like. Um, governmental. <laughs> um, well, it, it, I mean, you know, we're a small town, so you kind of look at the photos and you recognize all the locations and, um, it's just, the icons seem a bit more generic and Sorry. what was that? I said utilitarian. It seems. Yeah. <laughs> like we just got them off of some, you know. <laughs> Like MS yeah. Word, <laughs> not that we did. I mean, so sorry for saying that, <laughs> but you know what I yeah. mean. Like they just seem a bit, I don't know, removed. Hey, yeah, they're more sterile. <laughs> I agree. Absolutely, but I like the pictures as well. I think it, yeah, it brings out the humanness, like they were saying, and I, I think we do kind of probably want the entire website to be like that to bring planning to a human level. I think that's been everybody's vision. Right, Mike? Uh, anybody else have any more comments about that? Maria and Carlton, what did you guys think about the locations of the buttons? Does that mean, okay, so it, are we still saying that we're going to have both uh, ways to capture uh, the audience, audience's attention and in the interface? Um, it, so are there just going to be, it, is it, are we doubling the pictures uh, or are, um, are we having different pictures as far, if we're going to capture it in two different places? So the way that this works is that um, these are little like cards, little like coded cards. So we wouldn't necessarily be able to link to the same chapter with a different photo. So I think at least to what Kirby's common is right now, having the about the, pa the about the plan page, which is the first thing that people would click on, um, have the photo options here, and also having them in the plan chapters um, tab here. Okay. I was assuming, by the way, that that there would be more content above the links on the about the plan page. But if we if we don't think we're going to have any more um, content, then then maybe my suggestion is silly. Maybe because it would just look like it's the same page in both places, unless it's. But I was just thinking that it like having the option to link there from like the bottom of the about the plan page could be good if there's more content on the about the plan page. But if it's basically just two pages that are the same buttons, then um, that would make us look a little bush leak maybe, and that maybe not great. So um, that would be. And could there be just so, say underneath the photo, like a small blurb. So you have as much informative information as possible. So that they, when they click on it, they know that they're specifically going to it rather than having to click on it and that be a waste of time for them. Um, we could try to build, it sounds like if it's going to be on the homepage, have it be more simple, kind of get to the point. And then if we wanted to have a little bit more information, I would probably lean to putting that in the plan chapters page 
Um, this is the little blurb that just comes in from the story map. But if we, we could just, we would have to redo the layout a little bit here. But if people did want a little bit more of an introduction for economic development before they clicked on it, we could certainly add that. Um, this whole ball of worms is partially why we had put this on the back burner for <laughs> a while um, and tried to get to these planned chapters. Um, but we do really want to make sure that we put the energy and investment into this page. Like we want to make sure that it works as best as possible. Um, right now we're seeing this as a link from the official Montpelier website, but if someone from the IT department or website development department wants to incorporate it a little bit more into the existing website, we could also just say, okay, we're going to build it in, in the official one and not have this external site. So things to consider as we go forward. But I think making sure that we have enough description of, you know, how we got here, what the vision is, some of the key terms that we're using, aspirations, goals, strategies, um, will be helpful for this site. And I'm just curious, this is inside baseball possibly, but is there a, a, a dual vision for mobile as well as desktop? Because some people use their cell phones, some people use their, their computers, and it doesn't always look the same. Uh, it doesn't always translate. Yep, yep there is... I think there is a way to preview this site, at least on my side, on an iPad or an iPhone. Um, so this site in particular and Story Maps um, does have, they have their own functionality to make sure that it fits on different screen size. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm kind of with you, Kirby, in terms of, if they're going to be the same, if they're both going to be photos, right? If we, if that's the, instead of the icon stuff, then it does seem like redundant to have the same, basically the same thing on each page. And like the, I mean, kind of like improve, remove to improve, kind of keep it simple. I, I like the little snippet it just has there. You know, I mean, it's an overview and it's pretty straightforward, pretty approachable. If those, pictures move to the about the plan page. And then does that mean conceivably that the plan chapters tab goes away? And you would just access the plan chapters through the about the plan page? Well, I think the original, the original plan that we had for laying this out was to have the about the plan, the introduction page. And it was really to set the stage for two major sections the uh, plan chapters and the plan implementation. So, I mean, I think if, if I were making a suggestion and this kind of goes back to the original layout, which you guys kind of moved away from, but the initial about the plan wouldn't have those tiles on it. It was really to kind of start to explain to people, you know, what, what are these storyboards? And if you go to the plan, you know, the plan chapters link, this is what you're going to find in the storyboards. And it's going to have an explanation of what the storyboards are and what's going on in them. And if you're interested in um, how we're going to accomplish our goals, what are our goals and how are we going to accomplish them? Then that's what you would find on the implementation tab. And then we would have an explanation of, what's an aspiration, what's a goal, and what's a strategy. And I think that was a little bit of how we had originally laid out the about the plan, and it kind of got condensed down to what we have here. Um, and then we decided at a certain point, we're like, let's, you know, I think it was actually uh, Aaron who had the idea of, you know, let's, let's not try to write the executive summary until we've written the plan. So let's go through and do our plan chapters and when we're done with our plan chapters, we can come back to this opening page and maybe that would give us a little more insight of, okay, now that we've seen the chapters, now let's, let's 
do this, you know, let's do this about the plan page last, I think was Aaron's idea, because we really need to see the plan chapters all done, the implementation page all done. And then we can come back to say, all right, now, how do we tell the public? How do we teach the public? How do we educate them on, because we want them to come to this page first. We want them to get acquainted with what this plan is, why it's structured the way it is, how it works, and then tell people explore. Uh, that's that, you know, there's a lot of exploring you can do in here to learn. Um, and this is how it works. And this is how you would navigate from storyboard to storyboard or implementation strategy to implementation strategy. So maybe we follow Aaron's advice and leave this one till last again, but I think that's where we, where and how we ended up here. Like, I think that makes a lot of sense. I yeah, don't know like saying that too. Um, but I think having on the about the plan page, like you're saying, explain to people that how they can use the website, you know, look at the plan chapter section to look at individual chapter, you know, um, like inviting them to kind of jump in and poke around. Um, so I don't know. So I think after this green blurb, it just goes, so explore the city plan. So maybe having like a text right here, um, like in, I don't know, kind of like giving people instructions on how to explore it and what kinds of things they might be able to find as they poke around. Um, but yeah, I think that is something that comes after we've finalized or looked at all the different chapters and have an overarching message maybe. I think that all sounds fine. We, we had, by the way, drafted, um, some intro language and I just, I just pulled it up because it, it some intro language and some end language. I think it was intended for this landing page. Um, and also a brief description of what aspirations, goals, and strategies are, which I sounds like that was probably meant for the implementation page. But, um, so that stuff's on the Google drive. Um, so, so yeah, I guess that's where we were going. It's been a while. So we have to kind of refresh mm -hmm. ourselves about, um, what been. we're thinking, but what I'm hearing from people is for now, maybe not having buttons on the landing page and, but we'll revisit it later once we know more about what kind of content we're going to have there. Another thing just to throw out there could be, I just in general kind of like the idea of something being user friendly in a way in which you can get to the important parts, like from different routes. Um, so maybe not having big buttons though, like dominating the page, but maybe just having, if possible, like a small font thing to click on in the bottom of like each chapter's name or something um maybe i uh, you know but until but until we get this page like i don't think fleshed out I, it's hard to know what's the best thing to do with that yeah when we had just talked about getting rid of these icons but maybe still having some links i kind of envisioned like 11 small buttons in like a row that it was just it was less visually obtrusive maybe but still let people kind of jump right there if they already know what they're wanting to look for. Um, but no, I think, I think it makes sense to consolidate this, get rid of the icons. Um, I think as far as process goes, Mike, I think the plan on your side is still to do some chapter review and content writing over the next few weeks and months. And then maybe in early 2024, we set a session um, on this and we can even, it's not hard to set up these pages. So we can maybe try to come to you with a couple examples and see what resonates and what works from a user flow perspective. Um, but yeah, this is certainly not a final product. Um, we could get rid of the photo. We could change the colors. Like we can, we can do a lot here to, to make it a little bit more grabby, but 
Oh, Carlton, you're on mute. I was just going to say redundancy is always a great thing. Just visual redundancy, you know, and passive, uh, it, 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 as passive as possible. So, but as long, it's almost like a safety net. People want to go to exactly where they want to go, but they can meander it other places, but they don't want to get lost in the sauce, you know, and they can go back to where they specifically, you know, wanted to go in the first place. So like each page, like you said, have like those key, uh, you know, buttons. That's a great idea. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's a great idea. Thank you. Well, Aiden, let us know if you um, have ideas for like any like content drafting or anything like, like if you feel like some of these pages need um, a description, like, like we've talked about that a little bit tonight, I think about like Mike had mentioned what he kind of thought of like what the content of the implementation implementation page would look like. But if you, um, need our help with any drafting, I'd be happy to volunteer to work on that and pass it around to the other planning commissioners um, if you need any anything like that. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, just let us know. Cool. So I think next steps on our side are just to have a meeting with John to go through the implementation matrix continue to fill any data gaps or photo gaps or things like that, that we might need to finish out these pages and then continue to work with Mike on those final chapters, getting them into story maps. So it sounds like we might have it before the end of the year. There are, I think land use might still not be written, um, but other things are, are really close. Um, we're also probably going to do some sort of a contract extension as well. So the time and budget for more review and iterations of this will allow us to keep working on this for a couple more months. Yeah, I think was I think the original plan was to have it in city council in the spring or something, or maybe even earlier. But the flood, you know, ruined all of our timelines. I know. That sounds great. Anything else you want to show us? That is it. The um, the link to those nine pages, I'll make sure that um, Mike has this collections link so that you can explore at least the, the text content and all of these should be updated with the exception of energy. I think it's the old, the old draft. So we'll just be adding content to that over the next few weeks here. Does anybody recognize where that arts and culture photo is from? This on the the painting on the ground. Is this... It looks like where Roan is. Or Langdon Street. It looks like Langdon Street. Yeah. Um... You know, I, I oh, think yeah. they closed that. They did like a music festival there a couple of years ago. I think that's Langdon Street. Yeah, it does look like Langdon Street. But that that art's not there anymore. But, I mean, I don't know. That's fine. We can preserve you know, it. That's, and... It's a great um, catch on, like, especially for some of these really, like, arts and culture should have amazing, relevant, up-to-date photography like there's so much great work in Montpelier we we have some of it here but it's not all of it um so if you do have I can crowdsource that for the planning commission I they they rotate the this like on Lane Street in particular they they kind of rotate the art installations and stuff there which um I think it's I think it would be cool for the website to have some of the old stuff too um it's Actually, I don't know. It makes us seem more vibrant that the art's kind of rotating. And, the... and there's new uh, new murals too. There's a muralist that has uh, done some things uh, recently. Um, I, I I'm not sure. I I know where she works, but I don't want to say it. But you know, it, uh, she's discussed it, um, and so that would be a good capture and maybe synergistic opportunity, and you know, bring more life in his eyes. Absolutely. Yeah. Feel free to send photos to Mike and he'll make sure those get along to our team. But 
especially this chapter, all the chapters should have great photography, but this one would be really awesome to have as much as possible. Okie dokie. Well, thank you all. We will be in touch and I'm sure I'll see you before. Well, I'm not sure I'll see you all before the end of the year, but we will see each other again. Um, thank you for your effort and welcome again to Carlton. Thank you so much, Aiden. We appreciate you and your time. Absolutely. Thank you for your coordination. Have a good evening. You too. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. So it looks like that's coming along. If anyone has photos, we talked about that before. I, I don't think I ever acted on it. I didn't dig through my photos to find full Montpelier ones, but we could give those to Mike to pass along. They could end up on the plan. Um, I think they also have access to loads of photos from Montpelier Alive, right? So, yeah, you know, I don't think they need our photos. But if you want to sneak your family on there or something, like, here's your <laughs> chance. Um, okay. Uh, the next thing on the agenda is for um, uh, us to discuss the municipal planning. I don't even know if we're going to discuss it, but Mike's going to tell us about the municipal planning grant for 2024. So our recommendation, so every year um, in the fall, the state puts out um, an application process for which is called municipal planning grants. They used to be for about 10 to 15,000 and they bumped them up to about $30,000 now. now and they've started to put more money into it finally. Um, and so these grants allow usually for planning commissions to do city plan updates, zoning updates. Uh, we do most of our zoning stuff in house now because we're done with the big update. Um, but we can do specific plans in this case for this year. Um, I think I'm going to recommend that we try to get additional dollars to keep and uh, finish up the city plan. They are wrapping up at the end of, October, their current grant wraps up. So they're not going to have any money until January, but they're going to keep working on stuff because they've got some stuff that we had agreed to finish up. But the hope is that we'd then get, we'll apply for this grant to keep them on for another year. Um, the plan, the grants are 10% match. So I'm guessing my estimate with Aiden was that we're probably looking at needing 10 to 15,000 more to finish up the plan through next year. We've already spent $30,000. So, you know, this is, you know, significantly smaller, but it's not an unrealistic amount to think that this city plan was going to take 30 uh, to $40,000 for us to complete. So um, they would be able to then have a lot of help to be able to finish up through the process as, as, the public makes recommendations and makes changes. Uh, we can have them just go through and continue to make the changes on the, on the website. So that's my recommendation. Um, so if we want to have a, a, a motion on that, we can approve hiring, uh, putting in a municipal planning grant application to complete the city plan. And basically that's going to mean hiring SE group. And do you 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 need a vote from us so that you can put that on the application? Is that is that why? Uh, yeah, I need need the vote because you're going to have to sign it, Kirby. That says, as planning commission chair, where that's what the planning commission has agreed to do. So it's usually it's it's actually to kind of give give you the comfort in knowing you can sign it, knowing that you've got the support of the rest of the planning commission. And then I'll need to have you stop by maybe tomorrow. If you're going to be in front of city hall, which don't let me forget, I'm in the police station right now. So not for bad reasons, for good reasons. Uh, they've moved us out of the senior center and they've moved us into the community room in the police station. So. Okay. So at least, okay. Yeah. I so, can meet you and meet you out at the, out in front as well at city hall. If you're going to be over there, I can meet you at city hall as well. Well, Carlton and I were going to be there at 10. So, um, that's where I'll be at 10 a.m. All right. Yeah, maybe I'll meet you just out front just to get your signature. 
if there's if there's any stalkers watching the orca feed now they know but but it will be at the police station so watch out um yeah okay well we, we have to vote first uh so everyone's good with mike you're gonna apply for as i understand what you said a thirty thousand dollar grant from the state uh, 10 to, it'll yes. be 10 to between 10 and 15,000. Okay. So going for 10 to 15,000 uh, for additional funds for SE group to mm -hmm. do their part of the plan for us. Um, so do we have a, do we have a, a motion for uh, Montpelier to apply for a municipal planning grant um, to pay for SE group to help us finish the plan? Do we have that motion. I move that we uh, we seek that additional money to finish out the plan that we've started. Thanks, Mike. Okay. Motion from Gabe. Do we have a second? I second it. Second from Brian. Uh, any discussion before we vote? Okay. Those in favor of Gabe's motion, uh, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So I'll see you tomorrow, Mike, and sign it. And that's a lot better than sometimes in the past we've had to scan it and stuff, and it's a kind of a pain. So that'll be nice. Uh, okay. It is almost seven, and we've made it through our agenda, and we have this giant backlog of minutes. Um, so let's do it. Let's let's approve those minutes, and let's and let's have a motion to approve them all at once. But um, I'll give everybody. I move that we approve all the minutes all at once. <laughs> but people may need a second if they need to look at it. Yeah, but uh, yeah, uh, Maria, do you need a second before a motion? Yeah. So uh, I like I like the eagerness there, uh, Gabe. But <laughs> let's 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 take like two or three minutes to um, review the minutes, which are um, in Mike's email uh, along with the agenda attached. So I'll, I'll come back in a couple of minutes and be ready to take a motion. I was just thinking about the stalker comment thing. And um, when I was walking in Hubbard Park this week, I did have someone walk up to me and, and ask, like, hey, are you on planning commission? So some people, they, they know us from TV. It's true. It happens. It's not the first time it's happened either. Um, Look, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm pretty used to being fluorescent. 
<laughs> so I, I, I I'm okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so yeah, we're we're totally famous on Orca, and we get recognized. <laughs> They also mentioned something about finding like our planning commission work through chat GPT, which I didn't entirely follow, but um, I guess it makes sense if someone puts in some queries to chat GPT that it pulls off of popular planning commission stuff that exists on the internet. Yeah. Like the minutes. It'll scrub it. Okay, we're all back. I I re I mo move that we accept the minutes. Okay. Do we have a second to the motion to approve uh, the minutes? I will list them specifically. The minutes from July twenty fourth, September eleventh, September twenty fifth, and October tenth of twenty twenty three. I'll second that. Wait a second for Maria. Okay. Do we have any discussion? Do anybody notice anything in the minutes to correct? Where are they? Exactly. Because I'm 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 there. I'm looking at October 18th, October 20, uh, October 11th, 27th, October 19th, I mean September 19th of 2023. Do you see the attachments at the bottom yeah. of Mike's email? I do. So you uh, have to click I on have planning. I have planning agenda. That's what I have mm -hmm. here. And then when I go to the other, um, Mike, I have PC agenda. I just have planning agenda. I, I, I remember the ones that I downloaded for. They're just not in my email uh, as far as I'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> Keep going. You should be able to click on them at the bottom and pull them up. Um, yeah, it's... I, I believe I downloaded them. Let me let me just look there. But, but it's since you since you weren't present at those meetings, Carlton. It's it's, it's completely a, like it, it's probably best if you just abstain from the vote anyway, because you know you weren't you weren't there to know if they're accurate or not. And on our walk, I can't be blamed. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, any more discussion? Anything to adjust on those? Okay. Uh, those in favor of Gabe's uh, motion to approve the minutes from those four days, uh, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Aye. Okay. That'll be on future minutes that Carlton abstained in that vote. and But it passed 401 to approve the minutes. Okay, does anybody have anything else before we adjourn? Get out a little bit early tonight? I'll just make the quick note if there is anyone who's watching because the September 11th was the public hearing. Um, and even if people's comments aren't noted in the minutes that I have them all recorded and we have them all in our file. So other than that, that's, uh, yeah, other than that, that's it. Um, that was the only other thing I remembered was the the fact that we are the planning whole planning department is now in the police station. So um, if people need to come and see us, want to chat with me, they either have to get buzzed in through dispatch or they can contact me in advance and we can meet them at the door to let them in because the police station is a locked facility. So other than that, that's like it. Vagabonds out there, man. Jeez. Well, welcome, Carlton. Good to have you. Look forward to getting to know you. Great to be here. Thank you very much, you all. I appreciate it. You're welcome. And I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Okay. See everybody else in two weeks. See everyone. Bye, guys. All right. Bye, guys.